Um, but somebody who has been there and has been dealing with this particular issue is ex-justice spokesman, um, and in particular in the wake of the law and order issues of Hawke's Bay and the Tairawhiti and Wairo, um, is Nicole McKee, and she joins us now. Nicole, good morning to you. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Michael. Always great to have a chat with you. You too. Um, Nicole, have you been to um, Hawke's Bay with Wairo Tairawhiti yourself? No, uh, not during this disaster. I haven't. I thought actually trying to keep MPs away, those that yeah. that don't actually need to be there, is more important than having us there standing around um, not really being able to do much to help. So David went up there and actually went up in a helicopter over the weekend to have a really good look at the disaster effect and uh, came back with some photos. He's briefed us all on what's happening there and what we believe are the needs of the people in the Hawke's Bay and East Cape region. Okay, um, Parliament is reconvening today at two o'clock. Have I got that right? You have, yes. So what's today? Today is Tuesday, um, so it's delayed for a week. I guess this will be front and centre, this disaster of Cyclone uh, Gabriel um, and occupying parliamentary time today? Look, I expect it will be. We will start off with the Prime Minister's address uh, for the beginning of the year and that's followed up by debates by the other political parties speaking to that. So I expect that a lot of the debates coming from opposition parties will be about the cyclone recovery, response and recovery mm. stages. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of unhappy people and, and you can understand why, but the whole law and order and crime issue that's happening in the Hawke's Bay, it's, it's really hard to get a grapple on exactly what's going on because the people on the ground are saying, hey, we need help. We want to see some defence force here. We want to see a police presence. We're being looted. And then you've got both the Prime Minister and the Commissioner of Police saying, nothing to see here. It's not that bad. In fact, our crime stats have gone down. And when that happens, you've got to, you, you know, you've got to say, actually, what is occurring? Uh, uh, have we got government officials telling the people on the ground who have been affected by all of this that what's happening is in their head? Uh, I think that there is a response that is needed to alleviate some of those fears that the people up there are feeling. And I'm expecting, Michael, that when we come back into Parliament this afternoon and start debating, that will be a part of the debate. What is happening with law and order up there? What is happening with the response and the recovery? How come we're stopping helicopters from being able to take supplies, especially inland, where a lot of the emergency services haven't been able to get to yet? You know, why is it that we're not utilising common sense, personal responsibility, and allowing people to be able to get on with getting through this themselves without being told what they can't do. You know, let's let's group together and let's see what we can do to get through this. And I think a police and military presence for law and order will be essential in that respect. Um, the police say, um, as you've rightly pointed out, Nicole, that uh, they've got everything under control. Police Commissioner Costa yesterday is saying that there was no need to bring in the Defence Force. Um, and um, he says the situation under control. There's a lot of inaccurate information circulating. There have been examples of very bad behaviour here, he said yesterday, and we'll hold those offenders to account. We've sent 145 additional police staff into the area, which is fine of itself, but I seem to remember that about 10 times that number was sent to Wellington to assist with the parliamentary protest, which didn't involve a natural disaster or looting of um, folk um, and threatening of security staff. That's right, Michael. There's been around about 140 police sent up to the Hawke's Bay and I recall about 620 police coming to the Parliament protest. Uh, the, the Commissioner of Police is really downplaying a lot of what has been occurring uh, up that way and it's really quite concerning for me. You know, instead of just saying don't have the people to come in or they will be coming in over time. Here is the plan. This is what we're going to do. They're just saying, as I said earlier, nothing to see here. In fact, the police minister went on television and said that the stats are down. 
people don't care about stats. They're in a natural disaster. Yeah, <laughs> when someone <laughs> when someone comes yeah. at you with a with a weapon, no matter what it is, and they're trying to take your generator and they're trying to take your food, what they want is not statistics. They want the boys in blue and the boys in green to be down their streets, making sure that they can sleep at night. And the government has the opportunity to do this. Section 9 of the Defence Act allows the Prime Minister or the Deputy Prime Minister to invoke military assistance for civil power, uh, also to be able to assist police to provide the public service. And I don't understand why in such a, um, you know, such a really decimated area we have not had that enforced yet or invoked yet. It's there, it can be used. And in fact, within that section nine of the Defence Act 1990, it tells you what it cannot be used for and tells you what it can be used for. And the people, the people on the ground are saying, we actually need this. Police on the ground are saying, we need some more resources. It's not all honky dory up there. It's uh, a lot of crime is happening, uh, but we can't verify it. And I think the reason why is because people aren't reporting to police because they can't. So maybe that's why the crime stats are down. When your phone lines are yeah, down, I mean, how do you it's a pathetic, I, oh, listen, it's a pathetic answer, you're right. And listen, you know the police aren't coming. You know it's a wasted phone call, so why would you report it anyhow? Um, can I actually add a little bit of uh, information to you? You might want to go on and have a look at the platform uh, today, Nicole, before you head into the House. Um, my first interview this morning was with the Mayor of Hastings, um, uh, Sandra Handel, Hazelhurst, and she said we need military police now from the Army. Um, she said we're having private security operators threatened and uh, they are at risk themselves. So the security that the councils are putting out there to try and assist, they themselves are being threatened um, and being put in danger by the nefarious types in the community. So that was as of this morning. She clearly does not believe the assurances of the police commissioner either or of the Minister of Police. And I think re the reality is when you have a soft on crime government, you have the gangs out there that are saying, well, we actually know we're just going to get a slap on the hand. In fact, they have a no pursuit policy. And while there's no one really on the road, we're just going to take off because we know that the police aren't going to chase us. There is so much lacking of trust and confidence in police that we are calling out for the military to get in there and to, to give them a, a hand, some assistance because that's what the people out there need. I had a phone call from a police officer, and I won't say <laughs> which area they were in, but they told me their next door neighbor had been burgled while she was at home herself. We've heard um, from Gisborne just this morning that the local four square was broken into, and could we please have military assistance here to help? And you know, then you've got the others in places like Pukitapu who set up their own checkpoints so that their neighbours can sleep at night because they're so worried about looters. We actually need a government. Yes, a and being can I and I can also told, just interrupt told. you on that one, Nicole. Can I just mm. interrupt you on that one? And being told not to do it. Um, I, I think yes. the really interesting thing about those civilian roadblocks is that, you know, you can only do this if you get permission from the police. Well, to be honest, why would you seek permission in a situation like this? Yes. Uh, you know, you've got roads out, you've got power out, you've got a group of people who are feeling that they're going to be re-victimised. When you've already lost everything, Michael, including family, crime has a really big impact on victims, more so than usual. They don't need to have police saying, just give us a call and we'll get there I don't know, two weeks' time, they actually need something mm -hmm. right now. And when we've got a police uh, minister who stands up and says, look, please take your patches off and get in and help out or pull your heads in, what we actually need to hear is a police minister standing up and saying, you are a bunch of mongrels, you're in a mob, and we will arrest all of you and lock you up if we catch you doing crime. There is going to be nothing that will stop us from making sure that you're incarcerated if you're going to misbehave. He's not. He's not doing that. He's not being hard-lined. He's saying, oh, please, take your patches off, pull your heads in. I mean, what the heck, Michael? What is this? Mm. Oh, well, the other illegal. thing that struck... No, and the other thing that struck me also about that was he is the mem Member of Parliament for Napier. I mean, this is his area. He's not just the Minister of Police. These are his people that are being looted.
Um, and the the arrests, the 59 arrests as well too, Nicole, it seems you have arrested them, well done. They then get bailed and they're back on the street. Yep. Um, and this morning also yep. I, I thought was uh, interesting is that they've got 50 plus people, um, some of whom are serious offenders, um, unable to be uh, monitored because, of course, all the communications to do with their electronic bracelets and everything like that is down as well. So um, if, yeah. they, if they think they don't have a law and order problem in Hawke's Bay, both the mayors, uh, I've talked to both uh, Kirsten Wise from Napier, uh, I've talked to the Hawke's Bay Regional Council, Napier Rep uh, Neil Curtin, I've talked this morning to Sandra Hazelhurst from uh, Hastings. All of the locals are saying exactly the reverse. Well, who do you go with? Civic leaders who are elected to represent their communities um, or Commissioner Costa in Wellington? That's right. Burying their heads in the silt is not going to help the victims get through this. They need immediate assistance. It can be invoked with Section 9, is invoked by the Prime Minister. It can happen. I don't understand why they're not doing it. They put 6,000 Defence Force personnel on MIQ. They put 620 extra mm. police down in Parliament for protests. Yet we don't have anywhere near those numbers helping out in this natural disaster. That's wrong just on so many aspects. And like I said, burying the head in the silt is not going to help the victims. No, no. I think I think a lot of New Zealand would agree with you, and I think I certainly the locals. And even if it's a, one, of, it's one of those even if issues, really for me, Nicole, you'd err on the side of put them in rather than err on the side of not, because it's just in terms of the security. Uh, psychological security that you provide people who are scared, anxious, um, haven't slept, the adrenaline's long run over them. Um, I, I would have just thought in terms of reassurance, it would have been a good thing to do. I think so as well, Michael. I think it was essential and they should have done it straight away. I heard from another friend last night who's inland in Gisborne and he told me he's just absolutely exhausted. He doesn't have the energy to keep going. He's starting to get really down. And he said to me, you know, I just don't even know what day it is. I haven't seen anyone. A uh, helicopter came in to check that we were still alive. Uh, that was about five days ago. Haven't seen anyone since. Really stressed out. Now, this is one person out of thousands. And the reality as you say, is that as people get more and more stressed, more and more anxious, perhaps PTSD will even start to set in. To have mm. a presence of law and order around them that is visual, that they can see, can help relieve some of that anxiety. And to us at ACT here, it's a no-brainer that we should be, as part of a whole of government, there to support the people. That is our first job. That is our duty, is to keep them as safe as possible, not deny what's actually happening in front of them. All right. Um, you know, I, I, listen, you're certainly not going to get any argument from the people of Hawke's Bay this morning on that particular issue, particularly their civic leaders. Um, now, the other thing that strikes me is, um, and I'm really interested in how this is going to work, the Minister Grant Robertson yesterday was made the recovery, the Cyclone Recovery Minister. I thought that was a curious uh, appointment given that he's also the Minister of Finance and I would have thought would be spending you know, every day, every hour that God made, trying to work out how to get a budget out this year and to be able to, um, with the Reserve Bank about to hike interest rates tomorrow, um, work out how to get our economy through this. Or do you see that as a good appointment? Um, because I would have thought those two roles are quite separate and will be hugely time consuming. What do you think? Well, I think if you had a different minister there, they would have had to have been speaking with each other anyway about where money is going to be appropriated in this next budget. So, uh, you know, the discussions would have been had. But what does concern me is that when it's only one person, there is no discussion to be had. It's one person making their mind up on what's going to happen in regard to recovery and what's going to happen with keeping our country afloat and inflation under control. So really, in order to have good law, in, in my opinion, or good policy, uh, a, a workable budget coming up in a couple of months is to be able to have those discussions across the board with other stakeholders and those that are in the know rather than having the one person as part of that recovery package and part of the national budget as well. It is a bit concerning. Let's see what he does and what he can come out with, but it will be one-sided and yeah, we do have concerns about that. 
Mm. Um, it would be nice to think that all the politicians in Parliament, all five of the elected parties, will get together and form some sort of non-partisan or bi tri well, would be what, quin-partisan, won't it? Um, I don't know, overview committee, working party, whatever, um, to in relationship to this disaster recovery to start with, and then upon what is going to be clearly climate change mitigation as well. Are you seeing any signs in that direction at all? Not at this stage, but then those are probably conversations, if they have been had, would have been had with the leaders of the parties. As we've just, today is our first day, uh, most of your political parties will be going into caucus meetings from about now onwards. Uh, anything that has been discussed by government with the leaders, I expect will be discussed with the parties at their caucus meetings today. Right, um, and I guess this will be um, present for you as well. Okay, you're meeting today at two o'clock. You've, you know what, your parliament will be meeting Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you go home on Friday, and then your parliamentary session's slated to last how long, Nicole? We will be, well, th that will be an <laughs> another thing there, Michael, is we were scheduled last week to be sitting under extended sittings. Um, that was in order for Labor to get some of their policies and their bills through the House before we rise for election. Now that we've actually lost a week, we're not actually too sure on what's happening, whether or not there is urgent laws that will need to go through to address the recovery, what those laws may be, uh, whether we will be still in extended sittings or whether we're going to go into urgent sittings. So effectively, we will be debating from 2 o'clock in the afternoon till 10 o'clock tonight, tomorrow, we finish at five on Thursday. Uh, but if there is urgent stuff that needs to come in, we will start sitting at 9am uh, through to one and then again uh, at, from 2pm on to 10. But how that looks and whether it's going to happen this week or in the next sitting block will be determined by the order paper, which we haven't had finalised yet. All right, um, Nicole, best of luck to you. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, and uh, we'll keep in touch with you, obviously, uh, as this uh, story unfolds, particularly from a justice perspective. Um, so that's um, Nat Nat X, sorry, justice spokesperson. Yeah, a bit more about Nicole, though, which is sort of relevant to this. Nicole was also the, um, oh, she was sort of on the shooter's side, um, um, gun owner's side, in the wake of the Christchurch um, disaster and massacre. And one, in actual fact, I think Communicator of the Year about three years ago for the role that she did. And talking about, for God's sake, don't let one incident, in that case, the Brendan Tarrant um, massacre of um, all those uh, lovely Muslim folk at the mosque, or mosques, um, don't let that one incident impinge upon the civil liberties that the rest of us enjoy. Um, and, and it was very vocal on perspective in the wake of disaster, and in that particular case, obviously. Um, but I would thought that that's a pretty opposite view to have now too. Um, the perspective that you have in the wake of a disaster, the overreaction that you might get from official quarters uh, in the weeks and months to come. In the moment, as she points out, the imperative is to assist, and there are still plenty of people out there, thousands, who need assistance now, and uh, many in rural communities who feel literally abandoned. My, I have to say, my great concern, and I'll share this with you now, is um, it's been a week now. Uh, these are lots of rural communities still on their own. Um, and the adrenaline will have run out for a lot of them. The, I, I would suggest to you that the stress, the strain, the anxiety is going to ramp up even more, if possible, not less. Um, as this cyclone disaster recovery uh, gets underway.